Hey, how's it going? Uh, good evening. Uh, I'm just getting set up. I decided to go a little bit early. Um, I saw some people in Chan. Hey, how's it going? Awesome to see people here. Takano, hey. Dale Kurt. Dale Kurt. Hey, how's it going? Uh, Craven here. Oh, uh, that OS is popping. I hope so too. I haven't seen it. Uh, Paper Baboon. Hey, how's it going? There's a new name. How are you? Thassian, Aloha, Dale Kurt. All good. Yeah. Sorry about the dew today. I have my hat over here, but it's just like, it's too warm to like put on a hat. So I'm just going to let my hair flow <laughs> for now. It's kind of wild, but uh, if I put on a hat, I'll just be sweating. I decided we're not going to turn on the AC and probably till tomorrow. Kind of cooled off here the last four or five days. And uh, so, yeah, I've just been kind of enjoying the weather, but the humidity came back. So now I'm like, oh, I'll turn on the AC tonight, but I didn't want to turn it on now. So anyways, that explains the, the crazy hair and headband just because it gets hot. It gets warm in here when you have all these lights on and PCs on and everything. Uh, Paper Baboon, I love your, uh, love your videos. I get really intimidated by RM Home Lab, so it's great to have your video. Hey, thanks. No problem. I, uh, me too. <laughs> There's some awesome stuff going on, on in that subreddit. And um, so I, I, I feel your, uh, I, I, I understand your struggle because I, I, I kind of was there too. And I still am. Like every time I post something, I'm like, oh man, you know, I, just, I think that's uh, the internet or uh, especially Reddit in general. Um, you know, there's just a lot of, a lot of eyes looking at it. And anywhere you put content where a lot of eyes are, you know, you're going to get, you're going to get the good, uh, the bad, uh, the honest and everything else. But overall, it's been good. I've, um, I posted some stuff in that subreddit and Man, people have been uh, super, super uh, welcoming. So that's awesome because they're probably like, who's this guy? You know, <laughs> um, probably not. That's how they are in my, in my head. And I don't even know who they are because it's a lot of it's you and me and everyone else in this channel, too, that goes there. So, yeah. So, uh, yeah, well, welcome. I, I recognize uh, I don't recognize the name, but I will now. Paper Baboon. I like it. It's, uh, it's a lot of um, uh, uh, plosive, plosive uh, syllables. Paper baboon, yeah. Those are a lot of plosives going into the mic. But yeah, I like it. Thank you. Welcome. To kind of, I got a new PoE switch basically for free and it works well. I just need some ideas to wreck about it. All right, man. You were going at it. You were going at it, man. You were just nonstop. I love it. Yeah, I, I'm curious too about your PoE switch. I have a little small one. It's an Oxmox. Amox switch from Amazon. Sweet. Yeah, I'm uh I have a little five porter and that's that's good enough for now. Powers well I have two five porters that power two different sets of cameras. Uh but it's pretty awesome. PoE switches are awesome for everything. I have uh, and I have a uh, used to have an access point hooked up to one, um, uh, but now I use them to run cameras and it's great. Like like uh a lot of my friends when they asked me about my security cameras, they were always like, why didn't get you to get wireless? Why didn't you get wireless? And this was, of course, before Wise cameras that are awesome. You know, I, I my explanation is why I didn't get wireless cameras is because, like, if I have to run one cable for power, I might as well run another cable for network. And, you know, if I buy PoE cameras like I do, uh, then I, there's my one cable. And then I get the benefits of being wired and powered. Then I also get the benefits of, yeah, for sure. So wired PoE cameras, the best. Another reason why they're awesome is because you, you can put all of your networking equipment on a UPS and then all your cameras are still up when the power goes down. Like another reason why I, I use uh, wired PoE, wired PoE cameras, because you can just run them, like depending on your switches, just throw it on a UPS and all your cameras are up when the power goes down. But yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, so I highly recommend if you can, if you ever run cameras to do uh, PoE, because they're they're great, they're great. You just have to get all that network cable back to wherever your network closet is or your rack. Um, generic type, okay. PSU is a bit generic. Uh, yep, that's what I did when I wired out the family room. Use Cat 6E throughout. Awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. I uh. I, I did, so I wired this whole house, most of the house, uh, about six years ago. 
And then Cat 6 was expensive. So I ran Cat 5e because uh, I wanted to save money. Uh, looking back, I'm still glad I did because I get gigabit and I can do PoE over it. But yeah, it's uh, it's pretty pretty uh, pretty awesome to do PoE because then you're like, okay, what needs power? Just you know, either plug an inverter in there or a PoE switch like Takano's talking about, or you know, you just have so many possibilities. But yeah, uh, I still have a lot of wireless devices though too. Uh, Paper Boon, I have a newly built server and a Silverstone NAS tower case. I have two 10 terabyte shucked uh, easy stores and two used 8 terabyte WD Reds. I want to start using TrueNAS with Proxmox. I'm not familiar with ZFS. Hey, neither was I. Uh, well, having different sized drives lose a lot of the possible data I could be using. Uh, should I wait to get 10 terabytes instead? You know, that's a good question. I, I do think that you, I think. You, your Z, your VDEV, uh, depending on how you do your Z pools, I th think that you will only get the benefits of the smallest drive, I think, and someone better fact check me on that. But um, it depends on how you set up your, your, um, your pools. But then I still think like your smallest VDEV is going to be the small, it's going to be the biggest volume you can have across all drives. So I, uh, long story short, what I think is you want the same size drive across all, because um, otherwise I don't think you're going to get the most amount of storage you could otherwise. Someone will have to fact check me on that. But I, I always, um, I always when I, when I even when I did hardware raid, which I still do, I usually get you know whatever four, six, uh, eight of the same drives, same speed, same everything, same models and go that way. And I know that's not, you know, that's not everybody can do that. Um, but you know, I, I rarely do like a JBOD raid, just a bunch of discs raid. Um, but it's not to say you can't. Um, I have some wives cans, but they are unreliable. Oh, using the normal firmware. So I'm just using custom firmware that is local with RTS built in and everything. Awesome. You're telling me about that. So you can use like a blue iris or you know, any RTSP, anything that can consume that stream. So that's awesome. Uh, the firmware supports USB Ethernet adapters, so it might just be some PoE 5 volt splitters for them. Yeah, that's uh, it's, it's interesting. Yeah, I hear, uh, I, I see Wisecam just now they're launching their outdoor cameras, which seems awesome. Um, and relatively cheap. I think you get the, the kit or something for like, I can't remember. I'm, I'm not going to quote it because I'm going to get the price wrong. But it, they were only a little bit more expensive than the indoor cameras, which sounds awesome. Um, but yeah, uh, oh, Petabyte Gaming, hey, you're back. Uh, hey, how's it going? Hey, good to uh, Petabyte Gamer Zero. Hey, good to see you again. I think uh, I think last stream Tuesday was the first time I saw your name. Uh, but I'm terrible with with dates. I'm okay with names, but dates. Uh, they slipped me. But uh, yeah, so hey, good. How are you? Hey, Shane Singleton. Thank you for the follow. Thanks for thanks for uh, giving Mario and Luigi some uh, some FaceTime. They deserve it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, thanks for answering my question. Uh, question, great stream. Yeah, no problem, Paper Boon. Yeah, I, I, I try to answer questions or have conversations or let people talk in my channel for sure. Instead of just always talking at people. <laughs> Not that I do that, but uh, it's, it's easy to, to do that. Uh, on streams, talk at people. And I try to make my stream a little more interactive. Um, whereas, you know, my YouTube videos is talking at people and I don't know, my Twitch is a little bit more laid back, a um, little more exploratory, a little looser, and more about uh, more interaction, I guess. So yeah, no problem. Here's your first stream. Well, thank you. Glad you're here. To kind of wise cams are becoming pretty unreliable in my opinion, as wise keeps releasing new products uh, but not focusing on fixing existing products. Yeah, I mean, they're a, you know they're a newer company. I think they gotta go. They gotta go fast and wide, or someone else will. You know. But yeah, I, that's uh, that's unfortunate. I've uh, I haven't bought any, but I know like you know uh, I recommend them to people because in general it's it's cheap. You know, thirty bucks is a pretty small investment to make, and takes like zero infrastructure if if you know if if you're into that. Or if you're not into infrastructure, like a lot of my friends are not into it. 
I kind of twisted that one around. But yeah, um, yeah, it's it's got to be tough. It's got to be tough. And you know, there seems to be smaller, uh, smaller, newer company. Um, but yeah, that's unfortunate. Uh, I haven't I haven't uh, tested one out yet. I know that you said you can replace it with custom firmware. Maybe one day I will. I mean, for thirty bucks, it's kind of like yeah, why not? Uh, hopefully they keep that custom firmware up to date too. I thought I remembered you saying something along the lines that it's like either they have a very old version of that firmware available or once you go to that firmware you get no more updates, something like that, but I'm uh, probably misquoting you. Uh, Petabyte Gamer Zero, I have been running PFSense for a while and I was taking a look at Sophos. Uh, what made you make the change? Yeah, good question. Um, good question. <laughs> um, it's a, yeah, I'll try to wrap it up really quick, but for me, um, you know, I wanted all of my services, all of my reporting um, to be in one place. And, um, you know, I found with PFSense, like if I wanted something like uh, Snort to do um, packet inspection, you know, I had to install this package that kind of ran and all of the reporting was like, you know, it was basic Snort reporting page, open up a new port, and it was like its own app within uh, within PFSense. And most of their plugins I, I found were like that. It was like, you know, I, I feel like their plugin like architecture is all second thought. And this is nothing against the product or anything because it's great. But um, I wanted something more integrated. And so when I, you know, I, and I've always hopped around with network firewalls. And so, you know, I felt like Untangle um, was the closest thing to like the most um, integrated all-in-one firewall that I could find, like an open source or a free-for-home use one that, uh, you know, that was, uh, that could be installed on my own hardware. And so that's where, that's where I was for a while, was Untangle, because it was great, rock solid, and they gave you this virtual rack, which was a cool idea, which you could layer on more and more things. And then, um, eventually I, I found Sophos, because like, you know, every, I'll, I'll you know, I'll Google, uh, best, you know, whatever, virtual appliance firewall 2020, you know, 2019, 2018, you can go back probably 10 years and I've been doing this, uh, virtualizing my firewall, roughly. Oh, 10, that might be long. Uh, maybe I'm uh, maybe I'm exaggerating on that. I know for sure, for seven, because before I moved to this house. Anyway, um, so anyways, uh, Sophos, uh, uh, there's a great free home version. Um, everything is integrated into it. Um, it's backed by, you know, Sophos, which does a ton of security and antivirus stuff. Um, so they, you know, I guess kind of know their game. Um, and then, you know, um, on top of it, it was like, you know, just having, uh, long story short, it was just having everything integrated in one where I was like, this is the complete package, you know, and they do do some interesting stuff too with, um, reverse proxies too, which was cool because for before I started doing my own stuff, when I was hosting my own web servers, it was super easy to set up, uh, you know, I don't know if it's Nginx or whatever they do, but you know, they'll set up a reverse proxy for you uh, along with all the network firewalls too. And I was like, oh, okay, this is cool. And so, you know, you can very easily look at all your traffic, see where it's going. Uh, and it'll scan it for viruses, vulnerabilities. You can block ads there if you want. Um, and then, you know, a lot of the other stuff that everyone else is doing on Network Firewall, so. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, and VPN's built in. Open VPN is super easy to set up. I mean, it's easy to set up everywhere. So, that was, uh, that's pretty much my story. I should, uh, I should record that, because <laughs> a lot of people ask me, and this is, I'm not saying, you know, don't ask me, but, uh, you know, uh, a lot of people think that, you know, I, I found something wrong with everything else that I wrote, or wrote everything else that I that I evaluated or used and I didn't find anything wrong with any you know untangle open sense EF sense monowall DDWRT there was nothing wrong with it it was just I wanted more and I felt like Sophos XG firewall offered more so that's uh that's my thanks Nassi and that's my cool story bro for the from a network firewall <laughs> Uh, so Takano, oh, this is completely separate from why someone just made up a firmware on Scratch and started updating it every now and then the last month ago. Oh, Zomi Defang hacks on GitHub. Okay. 
It gives you full access to the system as well as you can modify it in any way you want um, as it's just lightweight Linux running on it. Yeah, and I, that's the case for, um, I found for a lot of things in general, it just has a super lightweight Linux running on it, uh, which is awesome. Totally awesome. Let me mute this so this gong doesn't go off. I think that's what happened last time. I think I just paused it. Man, this is the best timer ever. It's like bigtimer.net. I love it. Except for when the gong goes off and I don't realize it. Um, that's cool. I thought it was Wise that created that uh, firmware that allowed you to do it. Uh, I wish it were Wise, but I see why not because they want you know they want you to send their data to them and use their services. So that's cool. That's cool though. I'll, I'll definitely I, I should check it out. Thirty bucks. It's like a no brainer. You know I should set one up. You know set one up at home and point it at my dogs or point it somewhere just for fun and get it going on Blue Iris because because uh, they look sweet. You know. They look, and for 30 bucks, I mean, what can you buy for 30 bucks nowadays, you know, that's uh, going to give you, you know, capabilities like that. It's kind of hard, kind of hard. Things are, uh, you know, while a lot of tech has come down in price, you know, you know, good pieces of tech still cost a decent amount of money. Um, thanks for the answer. It makes sense. I definitely think it would be worth a YouTube video. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, uh, Petabyte Gamer. I, um, you know, I partially documented it in, in, in my, you know, how to virtualize your router uh, with uh, PFSense, but I didn't go on to Sophos only because like, yeah, I just, I just didn't, didn't make that leap. Um, mainly because like, I, I'm still a huge fan of PFSense and, you know, who knows, you know, a month from now, I can totally, you know, jump ship and go to some other network firewall. And that's another reason why I virtualize my firewall or virtualize or containerize anything. It's like I can make moves, you know, really fast. Just take a day, figure out, not even a day, you know, 15, 20 minutes sometimes. Figure out, you know, what service I'm spinning up. Figure out what service it's replacing and do it. With network firewalls, it's a little bit harder to switch, though, because you're, you're going to have to, and I've done this so many times, copy and paste, like, all your DHCP leases out somewhere, and then they're in a format that you can't copy and paste them in somewhere else, and it's such a pain in the butt. <laughs> but I've done that uh, so many times. Oh, so many times when moving network firewalls, so. Um, but it's, it's awesome. I mean, but um, then again, if uh, you do virtualize your firewall and, you know, and and you take that down, you don't have anything else to, to bring back. In the meantime, you have no internet. But what I like to do, I've done it so many times, spin up another virtual machine and get that going and get it mostly configured, create another virtual network and act like, you know, act like the DHCP address is the WAN port and then act like your new network you just set up is your new LAN, um, put a virtual machine on that virtual network and then configure the thing that way. Uh, so then that way, all you have to do is shut them both down, uh, swap the NICs, turn it on. And if you got everything right, it should work. But but I usually do that, you know, and then have to figure out the DHCP leases and all my firewall rules again. So yeah, swapping out your firewall is not fun, but it can be done, I, you know. Uh, hello, everyone. Xora, hey, how's it going? Good to see you, man. Um... Uh, Wise does have their own RTSP firmware, but people just got tired of not updating of of not updating it. I could see that, yeah. And and I wonder what's in, you know why you know what I mean you know what's the motivation for them uh, to to update it you know to not have someone on their platform because I think part of that low cost of that camera and I'm only speculating um, is subsidized by whatever they're doing on the service side. Um, whether that be, I don't know, because your video goes somewhere. I, I, I don't fully understand where they store your video. I thought it was like, you know, an Amazon, but who knows after that. But anyways, uh, and maybe they just analyze it to build up their machine learning model, you know, and so. But yeah, I'm, I'm totally speculating. I, I need a cool story, bro, because I'm like speculating on speculations. Um... Uh, Petabyte Gamer, what's your education background in? Wow, that's a, that's a broad topic. Um, well, I, I have a Bachelor of Arts in Japanese and I minored in computer science. So, but I went after uh, Japanese 
and uh, I actually went to Japan for a while. And uh, actually, my grandmother's Japanese too, so I'm I'm partial Japanese. Um, but uh, yeah, so and then I um, yeah I spoke Japanese. I thought I wanted to teach English in Japan. <laughs> this is going like way back. Um, and then went to Japan for about three months uh, with my family, my grandparents. And uh, after that, I kind of decided, you know what, I wanna I wanna work in the United States, and I wanted to do tech. Um, and yeah, so after that, it was, I mean, I, yeah, I started in a tech support role, didn't even get into programming right away. Uh, yeah, tech support role. Then that turned into more of kind of an automation slash, um, I guess, system administrator. I did some network administration for, for a while. Um, did some data center stuff for fun. Uh, not for fun. It was kind of, you know, I had the option to. Uh, in the role I was in and I just it, it was new to me. So I did um, and then Yeah, automation for a big company uh, Software automation building automated packages to deploy uh, and then software development and Yeah, it's just been software development ever since so apps web back-end uh, but mostly front-end and web and apps and uh, did it for a really large company for a while and uh, now I'm uh, at a small startup with friends, so yeah, <laughs> that's my that's my my background. So it, it, you know, I, I basically self-taught uh, programmer, I guess you could say, uh, for the most part, because I didn't really do much programming. Uh, I just I fortunately got an IT job right out of college, and it was only tech support. And I say only tech support like it's a bad thing, but no, it was awesome. I learned so much about technology about people, customer service, that uh, I wouldn't trade it for anything. So yeah, it was uh, basically, you know, doing help desk, help desk stuff, but you know, on tech support, like physically being there with people. But yeah, long story though, but yeah, so I, I bounced around a ton, done a ton of different stuff. Uh, never got into, well, I, I shouldn't say that. Yeah, I was gonna say I never got into management, but I, I kinda did once, kinda. Uh, but yeah, for a, for a short stint, uh, and actually Toronto, Canada. Got to live there for six months. Uh, and then be in, you know, temporary manager for uh, an infrastructure team, which was pretty awesome, great learning experience. But they knew I wasn't, uh, you know, I wasn't uh, going after being a manager or going after, you know, that type of role, but I was there to help. So, sorry, I'm totally rambling. <laughs> um, that's pretty fast. Oh yeah. So yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's uh, I'm I'm all over the place. I mean, my whole life I kind of just kind of bounced all over the place um, within tech, and I, I love it. Uh, but I really love what I'm doing now. It's you know, uh, software development at a small startup is awesome. You know, especially the the startup uh, that I'm working at now. So yeah, it's cool. Uh, Takano. So they store it on AWS servers, and they do use it to train their AI uh, for their person detection, yep, which is now intelligencing from free to pay whatever you want type deal. So the only way uh, they are making money are their subscriptions and such, full motion capture and now person detection. Yeah, I, I kind of had an idea that's what they were, I didn't know about the subscription part, but the only way I could see it being a low cost product is if they're then um, using the data to build another better service later or selling it. I doubt they're selling it. Um, so yeah, that's that's awesome. Yeah, good for them. Good for them. Uh, you know, that's that's really awesome. Yeah, I need to. Um, yeah, maybe I'll get one. Maybe I'll get one soon, and uh, flash it with the firmware you're talking about. Because I could use another little small one just for like where my dogs hang out when we're not home, which is like never now. But you know, in the future, it's pretty awesome. Uh, lights out 21. Yo, how's it going? Hey, how are you? Uh, could it buy gamer? I have my PhD in computer engineering. Wow. And I have done the small and big companies, uh, working with a good group of people makes it great. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Wow. PhD in computer engineering. Whoa. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, that is, that is, uh, that's pretty impressive. Congratulations. Uh, but I, I agree that work, uh, the, Liking the people you work with and liking the stuff you do makes work uh, awesome every day, you know? So, yeah, I totally, totally agree. 
Um, Craven, until something gets into that and has everyone's camera recordings. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I agree. The, the downside of keeping stuff on someone else's servers, you know, I, uh, I mean, I have tons of stuff on everyone else's servers, but not my video, you know. <laughs> I mean, if you, I mean, YouTube's video, but not my, not my personal video that runs in my house. It's, it's in my server rack and uh, don't have it, don't plan on it going anywhere. I take that back though. I do send, you know, when there's motion detection, I will send a picture somewhere to like a Gmail account so that I can check it or have proof if something goes wrong, but it's not video for sure. It's a low quality picture. Uh, Shane Singleton, hey, how's it going? Uh, my internet connection is being pretty lame, so the stream is buffering all over the place, but I wanted to drop a note in here as well and let you know how much of a monster help your videos have been in helping me getting started in Docker. Cool. Yeah, no, really appreciate it. Uh, sorry about your troubles with the internet. Um, I could reduce the bandwidth, but I've gone back and forth on, you know, do I do, yeah, whatever. Do I go a higher quality stream um, or lower quality so that some people don't buffer um, and I, I think I landed back on a higher quality stream only because like sometimes I use clips from it. But anyways, that's not what that message is about. Um, yeah, glad to help. Um, yeah, glad you're glad you're diving into Docker. I know it's super overwhelming at first, um, but you sound pretty enthusiastic about it. So that means things must be going good. Uh, but it's it's um, yeah, it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a black box until you start working with it. And you're like, OK, this is uh I kind of get it. This is pretty cool. But yeah, no, thank you, Shane. Thanks for thanks for stopping and saying that. Hope your hope your internet gets a little bit better. Or I hope Twitch gives me some transcoding options. Uh, if you're listening, Twitch, give me transcoding options <laughs> so that uh, people can transcode and and not buffer. Um, I don't know if it's there or not, but once you, whenever they decide, they'll give you the, the little gear on your stream, and then you can you know lower all the way down to 160 if you want. Uh, I haven't checked, but um, congrats on the PhD. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, congratulations to Petabyte Gamer. That's sweet. Uh, Takano, it happened once with the usernames and passwords at Craven. Oh, man, that's kind of scary. Uh, also posted my current mounting solution and sweet setup. Sweet, man. We'll have to we'll have to check it out. Uh, Shane Singleton. Uh, no, it's my connection. Uh, getting less than 10 megabit down right now. Ooh. Yeah, that's uh, that's tough. Ten meg down. Yeah, it's been a while since uh, I've had that. But yeah, yeah. But but I was saying like uh, you know if I had transcoding options, then you could lower, you know, this stream to whatever, 160p, 360p, and then you'd be using a lot less bandwidth. And although it wouldn't be as sharp, you would uh, not buffer. Yeah, and I think uh, I think that's why uh, I think that's why Twitch gives some people transcoding. Well, I think that's why you do transcoding in general so that, you know, everybody on every connection type has some kind of option to watch buffer free, but Twitch decides who gets transcoding because as we all know, anybody who runs Plex knows that transcoding isn't free. You know, it costs a lot of CPU cycles, so. And, uh, and uh, so yeah, they just, they don't give it out to anyone. I think if you're a partner, they guarantee it. Other than that, it's kind of like whatever, however they feel. And with everyone and their cousins streaming right now, uh, because the times we're in, they are, they're probably pretty pretty picky who they give it to. Um, Takano, yeah, it was all hashed passwords, but if I recall, uh, it was usernames and emails and possibly biometric data uh, from their scales as well. How would they have biometric data uh, from their scales? Oh, does Wise do scales? Do they do other things? I thought they just did cameras. That's interesting. Uh, would be interesting if they would let you do it yourself. Yeah, transcode. And, oh, that's, yeah. Yeah, I would totally do it. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good point. Yeah, just give me an endpoint with, uh, you know, an RT. I'll spin up my own RTMP server or whatever. <laughs> that would be sweet. Just send like... You know six streams to twitch all at once they probably wouldn't they would be like oh my gosh who's this guy but yeah that would be sweet um that would be pretty awesome that's pretty sweet to think about i could totally do it i could totally do it one of my servers or even this pc i think would be able to handle it but uh you know encode all streams or transcode all streams and send in in uh three four five separate ones that would be sweet 
Um, Takano, yeah, they do scales, cameras, uh, Fitbit, like watches, okay. Smart locks and sensors, okay, but it was the beta testers bio data, uh, such as weight, BMI, and some other stuff, awesome. If someone got my BMI and my body weight, they'd be like, mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's interesting. I do have a, I do have a, a, I guess a connected scale. And I used to have it with Fitbit, but after Google bought it, well, it was not their fault, but you know, Fitbit never gave a really great option to get their data out of their system. So that kind of stinks. But like you want it, here's like this CSV. And I was like, sweet. And then you look at it and you're like, oh my gosh. <laughs> There's no easy way for me to, I mean, I could parse it uh, in code, but then like, you know, a lot of other places don't have the APIs to this upload your way, like going back to, you know, whatever, five years ago. But yeah, that's interesting. I didn't, I didn't know um, Lies had a, or Lies, <laughs> Wise, not with an L, uh, had a, uh, leaked any of their data at any point, so. Uh, they said it was a mistake and just an unsecured test server. Yeah, but if it has real data, yeah, it's uh, beta, <laughs> you know, beta, beta's uh, still production, <laughs> you know what I mean? At least if they have real usernames, real passwords, and real data. Um, that makes it better not, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> Like, even if it is a beta product, it's still production data. Like, it's, you know, it's still people's uh, people's uh, data, I guess. Um, production servers were not affected and no videos were leaked. Uh, like, consumer-facing ones. I see. Yeah. But I guess just their, 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 their uh, scales, right? Oh, man. Awesome. Well, uh, yeah, that's... That's interesting. Uh, it was basically their beta server. Gotcha. Awesome. Well, I think uh, so. Um, the title of the stream today was uh, "Let's check out, you know, Pop OS." I I've heard a ton about Pop OS. I haven't. I don't know anything really about it. I hear it's awesome. Here it's a it has a good interface. Yeah, time to get popping. And I also hear that it's based on Ubuntu. So other than that, I know zero. <laughs> so I figured, you know what, I can't, uh, I can't speak intelligently about Pop! OS unless I like install it and look at it. Uh, first heard about it from level one. Awesome. Yeah, I don't remember where I first heard about it. Uh, Pop! OS is sweet, man. All right, all right. You guys are getting me all, uh, all psyched up. Yeah, I, the only way I know, well, I've known about it for a couple of things, but, uh, uh, you know, I, I go out to Distro Watch probably every, I don't know, three months and just, hey, what's the top 10? What's the top 10? Anything there I don't recognize. And, you know, so Pop, you know, Pop OS is on there. And then you see the typical Ubuntu, Ubuntu Mate, uh, Manjaro, you see all those, um, and Debian. But so Pop OS kind of caught my eye. So I was like, you know what? We spun up FreeNAS scale last time. That didn't, I mean, it was okay. We got to see some of the things that's coming soon, but I thought, well, hey, let's, uh, let's, uh, kill two birds with one stone and, uh, check out, uh, well, have a stream and check out Pop! OS. I guess, huh, what's, what's the more positive way I just heard of saying kill two birds with one stone? It was, uh, feed two birds with one scone. How about that? <laughs> I heard that the other day. I was like, oh, okay. So anyways, um, we're going to do two things. Uh, so yeah, we're going to stream and we're going to check this out, but I have like a decision to make. Like, I'm like, I'm like, so on the fence right now, I know that it has NVIDIA drivers and Linux support. And I do have one virtual machine that has a GPU pass through to it. And I was like, okay, do I spin it up on that Proxmox server and give it that NVIDIA driver and have this whole entire demo like crash terribly because something goes wrong? Or do I play it safe and just go with the Intel video drivers and, you know, use the, the virtualized uh, video card and this might not look as good, so. Oh, uh, but yeah, so I'm, I'm kind of on the fence. Uh, I'll let you guys call it if I should try to do it with GPU pass-through or if I should just try to go with stable. Uh, Pop! OS Sweet Man, I've heard of it from System 7 devices. Yeah, I saw they make awesome devices too. Like, uh, and, that, and I, yeah, it's right here, System 76. Um, yeah, they make some really awesome devices too. So I think this is a company that's putting together 
Um, let's let's go into here. So I know nothing about this company, uh, but uh, they make really awesome pre-built systems too. Um, so that was cool. Um, I learned that. Uh, so they you know they build systems uh, that run with run Pop OS. So that's interesting. Uh, System seventy six. Yeah yeah. Crash and burn. All right, Craven. We're we'll go. We're gonna try it then. Um, Tom for Lawrence Tech Services uh, got me hooked. Oh, cool. Uh, I haven't uh, haven't checked it out, and uh, yeah, I respect Tom uh, from Lawrence Systems a ton. He does he does a lot of content. He knows a lot of stuff. He he's got a super wide breadth of knowledge and experience. And man, he's uh, doing some awesome stuff. Uh, System seventy six is very interesting. Uh, they disable all the Intel ME and AMD PSP firmware, and they're more privacy oriented yeah yeah and they and on top of that they get some sweet looking uh design so this wood grain um so let's try that let's uh let's go with um let's create let's create a virtual machine for pop os i'm gonna pass through my nvidia gpu through too um i have no idea how this is gonna go uh if it goes very bad we'll, we will just try the other way um and if that goes bad too then then uh we tried. Um, Pop OS, did I even upload the guy? So there's AMD Intel. We don't want AMD Intel. I thought I uploaded this guy. It only take a few seconds. If I can remember where I put my drives. Huh, I must have replaced it. Okay, so upload, select files. We are getting the NVIDIA version. And it kind of stinks that uh, they have to have an NVIDIA and Intel version. Like I get why they do, but you know, it's because NVIDIA has proprietary stuff. Um, yeah, I think it's core. It's core boot. Wait, to kind of, uh, yeah, they have. Yeah, and they, and no, they have their own firmware that is customizable. Customizable, yep, that's it, okay. Yeah, right, thought so too. Okay, so, um, there we go, NVIDIA version. So let's do this. Let's go new virtual machine. Uh, so we were calling this Pop OS. OS is Linux. Yep. Pop OS, NVIDIA. This is gonna this is gonna crash and burn. I can feel it already. Uh, graphics card. We're not gonna give it any right now. QEMU agent. Yes, we're gonna go for it. CBIOS. This is all fine. Hard drive. Let's go over IO block. Um, yeah, it's gonna be on my fast stores. 32 gigs sounds good. I mean, we're just gonna be running through and see what it's all about. Uh, cores, let's give it eight cores. And let's go next. Uh, 8192, eight gigs. Ballooning device, and eh, I, I, I rarely check that, but I'm just gonna leave it. Um, and that's all fine. And we won't start this guy up. We'll just, we need to add the video card to him and pass it through. Huh? No space left on drive. Did I choose the right one? You know what? What happens if we do 15? I mean, we don't need that much. Oh, this drive. I think I know what, uh, I think I know what's going on. Give me one second. Let's get rid of this guy. We don't need him anymore. Uh, delete him. I wish they, I wish they would let you kind of save. Um, yeah. When you partially have a virtual machine set up and then you have to like cancel just because of one thing, that kind of stinks. Uh, remove, and we're gonna purge this guy at 104. Sorry, this this machine has like, so this is my second uh, Proxmox server. And what, I don't even have space left to delete it? All right, this is getting, uh, this is not, this is not right. Something's not right with this. Oh, okay. I do need that one. I can't delete that one. We'll try this one more time. If not, we'll do it on Intel on my main. Cause this is this is my secondary one. And so it's it doesn't get as much love as as my main Proxmox server. So Okay, back to here. Let's go 20. I mean it should be fine. I just deleted 32 from it. Um and I'm getting ready to do a large portion of my infrastructure tomorrow. Actually, I have the day off, and so, <laughs> and so I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, I have the day off, so I'm totally going to geek out all day tomorrow. Okay, we're doing it on my main one. I have no idea what's up with my other one. 
<laughs> today Techno Tim runs out of storage. It's only on that one, it's only on my SSD and yeah, whatever, <laughs> I do. But that's not the one with 20 terabytes of storage. For some reason there, I think there's something weird on this guy and we could totally figure it out. Um, yeah, I, I totally could. Um, but do you have to remove all these backups one by one? Is that how, yeah, oh man. I, I don't want to try, I don't want it to try again and like fail unless you guys really want to see me like pass the GPU through to that Pop! OS guy. Um, I'm still confused as to not restore, like why the drive space is so filled. And I know why it is for, for partial region, reasons, but like, what? Like, who's this guy? 104? We just deleted you. Let me remove this. I thought when you actually did purge in Proxmox, it would actually remove the disk from it too. Um, yeah. <laughs> Runs out of storage. Um, backed up a little bit. Uh, Dale Kurt, I've been thinking about adding a graphics card to my Intel NUC. That's awesome. Uh, 200 plus of storage, no place to store anything. Tell me about it. <laughs> I, I do, but this is my other one. Sounds like you need an upgrade to a petabyte. Yeah, <laughs> to a petabyte. Totally. And like, why does this guy, I think there's something up with this. Cause like, why would I, um, it's like one failed. Uh, we looking better now? 103, he's being used, 102, 101. All right, let's, I'll give it one more go. If not, um, we're gonna, we're gonna bail on the GPU pass-through Proxmox. And we're just gonna go with, just emulate a video card. Um, yeah, I'm beginning to think something's up with this drive. Cause look, Pop! OS, gone. Am I, am I going crazy? Um, it was just there, wasn't it? I think I think something's up with this this drive, and we can see it actually right. Yeah, what it's just gone. I bet this drive is. I bet this drive is toast. I'll try this one more time. Um, I don't know. If this is new question period uh, has passed, but an Intel Seven unlocked good for a lot of VMs. Uh, yeah. I think so. I mean, it depends on what those VMs are doing. Um, but an i7 is going to have what? You'll get eight, what, eight logical cores out of there? I, I don't see why that's not enough, depending on what you're trying to do. Uh, next video is Techno Tim trying to upgrade a petabyte of storage featuring Petabyte Gamer. Yeah, yeah, we, heck yeah. Yeah, we can totally, uh, we can totally uh, do a collab. But uh, do you have a petabyte of storage? <laughs> It's there, man. Oh, okay. I'll look again. But I only saw the Intel one on there, and maybe I'm just like going too fast. Um, but I only saw the Intel one there. Was it there? Well, I just uploaded another one, so uh, we'll have to review the footage. But you're probably right. All right, this is my this is my last time. If this doesn't go. We're going to my main Proxmox server. Eight one nine two. Uh, network. This is good. Uh, we didn't do, we didn't do one thing. QAMU agent, hard disk good, CPU good, memory good, network good, confirm. What say you? Yes? Oh, yeah. Bailing, bailing on that Proxmox server. Time to, time to use my main. I think something's up with that drive though. I've. I have weird things like when I try to explore the contents every now and then, it like takes 10 seconds to respond. And I don't think that's normal. Uh, but here, we'll go 24 cores. We'll make up for the GPU with a lot more cores. How about that? Uh, and it wouldn't be a demo if something didn't go wrong too. That's just how they work. I've been demoing stuff for so long. Mostly in corporate environments where people are pretty forgiving. <laughs> Not that you guys aren't, but there we go. Right away. So I'll, I'll have to, I'll have to see what's up with my my second Proxmox server. But like I said, I'm totally going to redo a ton of my infrastructure tomorrow. That's the plan. I have a laundry list of what I'm going to do 
So I'm going to tear down a lot of stuff and build stuff back up and hopefully uh, not take any of my services down. Uh, you did not make your sacrifice to the demo gods. I, I know. I totally, that's what I missed. I was like, I had the goat's blood like already too. And I just forgot to, you know, add it. <laughs> uh, are you sure you want to use the NVIDIA? Hey, yeah. Good call. Good call. Yes. This is a real demo where, um, where I'm going to do stuff wrong and you guys are going to help me out. I love it. Um, good call. Uh, I don't want the NVIDIA if I'm not going to pass the NVIDIA. Thank you. Thank you so much for Razy. Okay. Let's give it a go now. <laughs> wow. Yeah, totally. Uh, Petabyte Gaming. Uh, it seems like nothing works during demos. Doing a demo in front of a kernel and hoping they don't notice. Yeah. Yeah, I totally. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. Usually, and usually like with my demos, I practice them so much. Like if it's, you know, more of a, an organized demo that like I practice them so much that they're going to go pretty okay. Unless like the internet goes down or something, the network goes down. And so uh, with this, I did not practice one bit whatsoever. Cause I was just kind of like, Hey, Hey, thank you. Paper Boon, thank you so much for the bits. Yeah, I get to see my gray Mega Man. I got uh, different colored Mega Mans for each of those. Uh, I hope still work because I put a ton of effort into those a long time ago. But yeah, thank you so much for the bits. I really appreciate it. So, wow, I, I kind of like the design so far. Okay, I'm kind of into this retro-y kind of look. Uh, English, United States of America. English US keyboard, sure. Uh, input language, uh, default, uh, clean install. Yeah. Why wouldn't we, uh, yep. Erase and install, uh, encrypting this drive also, uh, we're not going to encrypt. I mean, you probably should, if it's your own device, this is a virtual machine for test. And like, I don't want to have to deal with putting in a password and yeah. And the possible small performance hit I get. Actually, it'd probably be a bigger performance hit on virtualization because I don't think it could, I don't know, use a certain part of the processor that does it. Um, do I create VM templates? No, Dale, I don't. Um, that's a good question. I, I probably should, but I rarely... Hey, Paper Baboon, <laughs> thank you so much for the 100 bits. Appreciate it. Yeah, there's my purple Mega Man. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. And I haven't heard that noise. I forgot what that noise sounded like. It's so... Uh, I don't know, that uh, the 8-bit retro, uh, you know, sounds I have for different events, I, I really enjoy them. Um, but I don't create uh, VM templates. I, I probably should, but I don't, I don't start out with new OSs enough. I'll put it that way. You know, I have a couple of Windows VMs. I have a couple of Ubuntu servers. Um, and other than that, um, everything I have is containerized or it's its own OS, like my... Uh, virtual network firewall. So I, I, I should probably put more time into templates, but uh, a lot of times it's it's just as easy for me just to spin up the OS. But it's it's a it's a valid valid question. I probably should at some point, but but yeah, I, I should probably look into them more. But they they do look awesome, and I, I get the idea. It's it's basically almost like creating a an image, um, like a like an imaging system, you know. Um, creating a, I assume, an image from that and then stamping them out. But yeah, I'll have to check it out for sure. Uh, Bandit2137, uh, there's a new name, I think. Hey, how's it going? Uh, watching Pop! OS install through Pop! OS. <laughs> All right, Inception. All right. Yeah, this is my first time. I'm, uh, I'm enjoying uh, enjoying it, like the uh, the user experience so far. Like, it's, it's kind of retro. And, and like this screen just reminds me of like, some PC game in the 90s, you know, uh, so it's it's pretty cool so far. Um, I learned to do that recently. I have destroyed and recreated my Kubernetes cluster so many times. Oh, yeah, that's that's true. I just created a VM template and recovered. It was pretty quick. That's awesome. I uh, I, I mean, I, I do take snapshots um, before I do something major, but I'll have to do a VM template. That's a that's a good point. <laughs> Maybe I'll do that tomorrow because I feel like that's how tomorrow's gonna go when I start tearing stuff down. And like, I'm like, oh my gosh, how do we get back to where I was? 
or how do I get back to a good state? Um, because I'm gonna be building out my rancher and migrating a ton of stuff tomorrow. Um, using something like Ansible would be more useful than templates. Yeah, Ansible is, uh, yeah, I mean, if especially since it's not, it is its own system, you know, versus like templates within here. I haven't used a ton of Ansible. I hear a lot about it though. Uh, Takano, uh, forgot to ask, what is normal RAM usage for PFSense? I'm sitting at about six gigs right now and it seems a bit high. I think it's going to use as much as it wants or is allowed to, uh, possibly, uh, because of all of the connections it makes and I don't know, routing. I, I honestly feel like it's going to store stuff in memory until it wants to boot stuff out. Um, so if you're not seeing paging on disk, you might be able to just give that VM less RAM. Um, Give that VM two gigs of RAM and watch it for a day. Um, if you don't see any IO activity on your disk, then you're you're pretty fine with two gigs. If you do see you know paging or activity on your disk when you don't think you should, uh, besides the routing, routing, uh, sorry, logging and graphing data, you know you should see some. Uh, but give that a shot because Linux likes to use as much as much RAM as you give it. Um, and it'll look like it's all used for the most part. At least that's, that's been my observation. Okay. I'm always, I, I never trust that they're really gonna, um, uh, virtually eject this guy. So I'm, maybe I'm a little old school, but I, I shut it down and then I'm like, okay, all right, let's see this guy now. Um, it's kind of normally when you do open VPN and other plugs, it'll consume about three or four gigs. Hey, that sounds about, yeah. So. Uh, so yeah, a little bit over. Yeah, what what uh, what you're seeing then? Uh, six gigs. It's good to know XOR. Yeah, I'm always I I don't know how much it should. So that's a it's a good observation. It's always good to have a someone else who's done something before. Welcome. Might just leave it at six gigs then when I'm thinking of making a. And server yeah nice yeah I, I just I'm always like if I have the RAM I'm gonna do it um, okay I mean I'm just gonna keep it on as much as as possible location services no where am I uh, Chicago it's the right time zone connect my online accounts no way let me see what's here though okay next cloud interesting Facebook Microsoft Flickr okay the usual suspects Foursquare they still doing stuff Exchange, IMAP, SMTP, and Enterprise Login, Kerberos. Oh, interesting. Uh, interesting. Uh, yeah. Okay, about me. Do I get to set my avatar? Yeah. What do I want my avatar to be? I usually pick, um, usually when I do avatars, it's either um, technology or birds for some reason. I really, or space. So it's like space, tech, or birds for some reason. God, okay. We'll do the cat. You're the first to say cat. We're getting a cat. Okay, password. Um, I better put something. Yeah, doesn't matter because you guys can't see it. And this VM is going to be going away. It's a weak password. Uh, start weak. Start using Pop OS. Okay. Uh, my PFSense is a physical Dell Optiplex small form factor desktop. Uh, but does not use more than 15% of the 8 gigs of RAM it has. The internet's mascot. <laughs> that is true. Yeah, password equals password. You are uh, you are exactly right, except for it's lowercase. Uh, you are exactly right. It's exactly what I did. Uh, because this VM uh, is going to be going away. Okay, so I have no idea what to do. Okay, activities. Okay. So nice, clean, clean interface. I like this t-shirty kind of logo right here. Um, um, the normal stuff. Okay. Tile windows. I don't, I'm not going to check anything yet because I, I want to see what the default experience looks like. So this is super clean so far. Like it's like, get everything out of your way. This is actually nice too for date to see this much. I don't know about notifications. I would expect those to appear here, but maybe not. Um, yeah, not sure. It's not running in any other plugins. I perf. Oh, gotcha. PFSense stuff. Okay, so what do we get out of the box? So we get Firefox, we get terminal. All right, let's let's 
shoot, shoot. The first thing I always want to do is update things. Is that wrong? Oh my gosh, can I even type today? Forever. Um, I should probably do this through whatever their app store is to get stuff, but let's see. Pop shop. Oh, <laughs> they called the pop shop. Hey, this is nice. This is clean. I like it. Um, what comes pre-installed? Operating system updates. Thanks for installing those. Oh, these. Oh, this is because I ran apt app dash get update. Comic books. So they installed something called comic books. Calendar, comic books, extension, Firefox, GNOME, iBoss, Popsicle. What it uh, must be. I don't know what Popsicle is. I think we're gonna find out though. So this is a lot of GNOME stuff. So oh, it is GNOME. Okay. Um, we could say update there, but let's just say upgrade here so that because I want to. Lots of updates. Lots of updates. Um, uh, strange if it's you're not running that much. Yeah, I, I'd put a yeah. I'd, me and Linux or any OS when it wants to use tons of RAM, I, I'll just I'll totally just if it's a VM, I'll give it less and then watch the disk for paging. It doesn't write it write or read from disk too much then it's just being greedy um it does apt update automatically on that page as far as i know oh yeah good call um i thought maybe it was because i had it running in the background oh this is interesting so when i click on activities it shows me all active windows right hey <laughs> paper baboon thanks for the bits appreciate it thank you thank you thank you thank you interesting so is this like my uh, no, I don't want to close it. Is this like my task switcher at the same time? It is. That's cool. Okay. So this is like an alt tab and a start menu in one. So I'm going to be conflating a lot of terms with things I can relate to. I mean, I don't know if this is a GNOME thing or a Pop! OS thing, but I kind of like it. Same way you get to your apps. I mean, do I have a quick launcher? Oh, uh, I might. I might. GNOME. GNOME. Yeah, good call. You know, I haven't, I mean, uh, Ubuntu, I think 18.04, um, whenever they, whenever they were still on Unity, that's the same, that's the last time I looked at, like, Ubuntu's, um, um, you know, desktop, uh, so, uh, other than that, it's been, always been Ubuntu server, Ubuntu server, and then I've looked at Mate and stuff like that, too, interesting, okay, so, yeah, I heard that you can RDP into it too. Can you use XRDP? Isn't that a thing? I'm, I'm just so used to SSHing in. Is XRDP, um, yeah man, GNOME is my go-to for desktop, awesome. Yeah, I used to like KDE a lot, and then and then I it turned too glassy and shiny, um, but I thought it was really clean a while ago. But now it's like, yeah, GNOME is, or GNOME is, uh, is pretty good. I, I totally agree. But was, isn't it like GNOME 3? Um, that That's when uh, like Ubuntu finally said like, hey, we're not going to do this Unity desktop anymore. When when Ubuntu tried to be all like, I'm going to be tablet and OS in one, and then they saw what happened to Microsoft. <laughs> um, uh, I guess not. Uh, Proxmox is showing six gigs of uses, but PFSense is reporting 4%. Oh, yeah. And Takano, that's because the... Uh, that's because uh, you can't install the QEMU agent. So that's another benefit of having the QEMU agent is because it'll report the right amount of RAM. So yeah, good, good find there. Good find. Um, yeah, you can just press the, the super Windows key and typing if you mean quick launch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The problem is right now I'm I have this virtualized, so that key doesn't get sent through. See what I mean? Or did it? Oh yeah, it did. Oh yeah, it did. Okay, but they're both intercepting it now, but that's good to know. So I can type in here, Firefox, right? Yeah, quick launcher. I'm gonna call it quick launch. On Mac, I use Alfred, so that is awesome. Okay, so XRDP, that's what I was asking about. Yeah, let's do that. So it's sudo apt, uh, get, install. Does XRDP give me like, does it give me the performance of RDP uh, protocol like for Microsoft or is it or is it just like emulating RDP 
in VNC, if that makes sense. Um, XRDP, because man, RDP, and I know it's a proprietary protocol for Microsoft, but man, is it, uh, is it pretty performant for, you know, for what I need to do. Um, uh, so uh, to enable RDP, it should be sudo app get XRDP. And then I need a system what? System CTL? Oh no, after that's afterwards. That's the start of service. I was like gonna gonna start going crazy on it. Um Okay. Let's see. And then uh, it's a system CTL system CTL. What's the service name? Enable XRDP. What? Doesn't it start? Didn't XRDP, right? Oh yeah, there we go. Okay, put in my super secure password. And do I put it in again? Uh, how many times does it need it? That tells me it's not wrong, not right. That was weird. Did, was enter sending something else? Okay. Anyways, uh, I'm unsure. Uh, time to reduce the allocated down by a fair bit. Need more VMs, I'm sure. Citrix uh, created RDP, just FYI. I work there. Okay, XOR, yeah. That, yeah, because uh, Citrix used to have um, like all their thin client stuff. I thought, I thought RDP though was like a Maybe, maybe Microsoft bought it. I thought, I don't know. I thought Microsoft had their, maybe it's a Microsoft RDP that I'm thinking of. But I do remember Citrix and thin apps and you would install this ICA client and the ICA client would pull all these thin apps through and then you were basically terminal servicing into a Windows server. And the app was like seamless though, appearing on your desktop, like which, which was super awesome. Thank you about running sudo. Um, you would think that I've never run Linux before. There we go. Thank you for the reminder. Oh, Microsoft bought it from Citrix. Okay. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, so um, let's, uh, should I should I just RDP in now? Let me do this. Let me figure out what my IP is. Terminal. Uh, it's not IF config anymore, is it? Oh yeah, it is. Sweet, they must have installed those tools. Okay, so what am I doing? 238? Please give me an awesome experience because I want an awesome experience and this does not look like it so far. Um, Techno Tim. I'll be able to tell if it's uh, really doing RDP still because I'll actually get, I'll, I'll see my mouse cursor. That's always a, like a telltale sign of uh, VNC. Okay, black screen of death. Oh, good call. Good call. You mean out of this session, right? Here, here's how you log out. I just installed like a ton of updates, so let's just reboot this guy. I can't reboot from here? What? I'll show you how to reboot. <laughs> I don't need your stinking UI to reboot. Okay, let's do that. <laughs> yeah, but there's no reboot. Oh, do I hit power off multiple times? I figured it would give me like a fly out of saying, uh, oh, power off. I got to click it one more time. Okay. Okay. I do wonder, I wonder... There's a menu. Okay, so let's, I'm gonna try this off here. Techno Tim, my password. I always hear people suggesting uh, XRDP and I've never seen it in action. Hey, look at that, hey. Oh, what? All right, okay. Uh, can I make this guy full screen? Cause this, this is starting to get awesome. Oh, first time ever doing XRDP. Okay, let me adjust a couple things. Um, because I never, I always SSH into uh, Linux systems. So can I do a full screen on this guy? Display, 
full screen. Let's go for broke. Yes, man. Everyone who says XRDP is the way to go uh, has been right so far in my book. Because this seems this seems pretty awesome. Because it's not BNC. <laughs> Come on, go full screen. Don't give me that. Uh, I don't think it's going to do a real full screen, is it? I don't really even understand what's going on right now. It's only like... Oh, yes. Nice. Nice. Oh, yeah. This is good now. This is good. I like it. I like it. This is my first time using XRDP. Because uh, like I said, like, you know, one, I usually SSH in. One, the Linux systems I remote into don't even have a UI anyways. I don't have the, you know, whatever add-on desktop installed for Ubuntu. Um, and then two, when I used to in the past, it was like use Team, team Viewer or something. Because, you know, I, I don't know if XRDP was a thing, I don't know, years ago. But yeah, look at this. That's pretty good. All right, let's uh, let's start installing some stuff. Can I do side by side? Can I drag these? Oh, get down here. Can I drag? Oh, yes. Where's my terminal? Where's my snare? Oh, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can see this. Yeah, I can see this working. Um, do I have to, like, I haven't used their pop store I assume it's everything from aptitude, right? Um, what about VS Code? I probably get that right from Microsoft. Huh. I'm always like on the fence, like, do I install? Like, well, I don't know what a flat hub is, flat pack, or pop OS Debian. And I don't know why there's a, those are failing, whatever. I don't know why you're asking me for my password now. Um, what, what is a flat pack? You can get copy pasta, yeah. Um, uh, Flat Hub will be the latest. Yeah, I want, I want that. Cause I'm, I'm a, I don't know. I've always been a go out to the website, download it, and run the curl command uh, kind of person for things, or download the package from them versus an app store. Yeah, like, like here. Um, is there any difference? Is there any benefit of going through their app store? You know, um, I don't know the answer to that. Uh, so let's go through their app store. We're using we're using their software. Let's go through their app store. What's my alt tab all about? Where are you at, buddy? Yeah, we're we're getting this. Yes, this is pretty awesome. Um, you can make it snappier if you lower the color quality in the RDP. Yeah, I'm Windows client. I thought about doing that, but you know, I'm not doing a ton of, yeah. I mean, you do see, you do see some latency there. And, and most of the time I do turn it down pretty low, but I figured, well, if you guys are looking at this, which I'm remoting into a system and then it's getting transcoded, then maybe, I don't know, keeping it a little bit higher would be better for you guys, but. Uh, especially with text getting small, but maybe I'll do that here in a second. Um, guaranteed compatibility and proper dependency management. Oh, Virazi. Uh, so that was probably in response to like, why should I download for their, from their app store versus going directly out to Microsoft and getting VS Code? Uh, that's awesome. Um, you should look it up. Cool. Uh, there's a lot of software that runs the newest normal repo versus the normal repos. Cool. And, and, and you're saying that's the uh, flat hub. Awesome. VS code. Nice. I can, I can you know, 90% of my job is 95% of my job is in inside of VS code. So this is cool. Uh, I don't know why you're asking me for my password again. Authentication required. The login key ring did not get unlocked when you logged into your computer. Well, I'll unlock that thing. Oh, probably because I, I logged in this way through RDP. Yeah, Flat Hub. Seems like XRDP is a solution for the horrible VNC experience <laughs> in over. I totally agree. And that's why if I run Windows, I'm RDPing into anything because it's hands down 
you know, one of the best remote protocols out there. I, I know there's Parsec and stuff for gaming, but we're not gaming. Um, and, I, and I think for, for, you know, a lot of the stuff I do, RDP is fantastic, which is very minimal, like remote administration for Windows desktop. Uh, but yeah, I, I totally agree. Like, man, XRDP, like I see people all the time recommending it. I'm like, I never knew. And I guess I, I could have looked myself. I, I just thought for some reason, when you connect RDP, it's going to do some, you know, some silly magic behind the scenes and um, basically still give you a VNC session. But I, the one way I can always tell that I'm not in a VNC session is because I don't see my mouse trailing behind me. It's like, it's like, when I see the mouse trailing behind my mouse when a remote window system, I feel like I've gone back like 10 years. <laughs> but that's just me. Uh, yeah, FlatHub. All right, got two more gigs of RAM to mess with. Nice, Takano. Nice, dude. Uh, the reprompt for auth is an R RDP Linux thing. Uh, there is a fix for it, but not worth it in the demo. Thank you. Yeah, I figured, I thought, like, thought to myself, like, okay, this does seem a little bit weird, uh, but I did log in. A different way i logged into a brand new session using xrdp so that's uh good to know thank you for that craven uh xor all right guy i'm out and on the run techno tim have fun with pop yeah thank you thank you no i i appreciate it man thanks for thanks for popping in again and schooling me on some flat hub and i want to say flat pack but on some flat hub and some some pop os stuff appreciate it man um awesome so i can get vs code this is this. I wish that uh, this wasn't like this. And this is just me because, you know, in, in VS Code uh, on, on Mac and at least Windows, both of those, you're you have like this seamless, you know, seamless uh, app bar. But I'm, I'm nitpicking. Maybe maybe when I download the update, do I get keyboard commands? This is how I normally do a full screen on on Windows. It's like that on Mac. It's like that. Oh, there we go. So it's like the Windows version. Cool. Check for updates. Uh, let's get some extensions. I'm actually gonna put this over there while that's doing it. Should I get Chrome? Should I not get Chrome? I mean, I'm a Chrome person. I understand that there are people who don't like Chrome because Google and privacy, uh, but a lot of people use Chrome, so I'm gonna get Chrome. Can I not clear out the search? Am I like being too impatient for this? All right, Firefox, sorry, love you, but I'm gonna close you. I don't know why this guy is just kind of like stuck. There it goes. Maybe I just don't understand their UI. Ha, ah, popping in, pop OS. All right, I'm done. <laughs> no, keep keep the puns coming. Oh yeah, so so they only give you Chromium, but I'm sure, um, <laughs> look at me. I'm going down, do you see where my mouse is? I'm going down to here to try to uh, show my bar because I feel like I'm on a Mac right now, which which is probably a good thing uh, But I'm so used to seeing uh, My icons hidden or on a, on a different desktop, but huh. Bassy and Chrome you oh, all right. All right. What, what should I use? What is it Firefox? Like don't get me wrong. I use, I use Firefox uh, Chromium uh, Chrome uh, Safari Edge like I use them all so I'm, I'm not uh, I'm a web developer, so I, I kind of have to use them all <laughs> surf okay surf let's go surf you guys are uh, totally trolling me you could you could have said uh anything right now yeah surf <laughs> look for uh Vival vivaldi <laughs> how how i've seen it vivaldi Netscape Navigator. You guys are totally trolling me now. I'm not typing in Netscape Navigator. Um, but I do want to see if Edge, do they publish it here? No. See, you got to go out. You got to go out to them and grab this stuff. And I keep going down to the bottom. <laughs> you guys are totally trolling me, which is totally okay. Because, uh, uh, like, I'm, uh, I'll admit, like, I'm a Linux desktop noob because, uh, you know, all the Linux systems I use, it's always SSH and then it's Z shell or bash. Um, and I have run a version of Linux like many times in the past, but now I'm just, it's my daily drive is Mac and Windows, Mac and Windows. Um, and then SSHing into all of our servers, which doesn't have a terminal. Um, so let's go back, let's get Firefox back. Cause I, I just want to see, like, I kind of want to see like, 
explore some things. Like if I were to ever replace, you know, my Windows desktop or my Mac, uh, I can't fully replace my Mac because I do some Xcode stuff, but um, how well things work that uh, a majority of people uh, use not the ads um, when they have a full desktop experience. So Chrome is, is gonna be one. I'm just gonna install these. Yep, for Debian, give me that. Sure. Hey, Mike Alf, 8401. Thank you for the follow. Thank you. It's interesting. I didn't. I didn't see the uh, notification there. Um. <laughs> yeah, there's a kappa for a reason. I know. Totally. Totally. I, but I didn't. I was like, I thought I was getting the kappa because, uh, not because of what you said, but because of how I was uh, actually responding to it. So. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, took that too literally. Hey, there it is. There it is. Uh, so that was Mike A A ALH 8401, 84001. Thank you for the ball, appreciate it. Um, have you tried Visual Studio on Mac OS? So yeah, um, Visual Studio Code. So I have used VS Code on Mac OS. Yep, uh, you actually use it all day long because we use Macs at work. Um, and I develop software, and so I use, yeah, VS Code, totally. And I use it on Windows all night. So all day on a Mac on VS Code, all night on Windows on VS Code. Uh, that's pretty much my day. And uh, it's cool because uh, I can actually synchronize settings. Like there's this awesome plugin that will dump all of your settings and your plugins to a config file in GitHub in a gist. And then um, every time you launch, it'll check to see if there's a new version and pull it down. Uh, so I sync them. Oh, real Visual Studio. Oh man, I I have avoided the real Visual Studio like the plague ever since I stopped using the real Visual Studio. I'm sure it's better now, but I've used Visual Studio 2010, 2012, 2013, I think, and SP123. And, you know, every time you do it, it's like, you know, you have an hour of just waiting for it to upgrade. I don't mean to bash it so much, but there's a reason why VS Code exists now, because uh, it's a lot more modular and it's cross-platform. But I know that they have full Visual Studio um, cross-platform. But no, I, I haven't. Uh, do they have it? It's funny, I was just wearing a Visual Studio shirt the other day uh, because I got one at a Microsoft conference once. And I was wearing it, and it's like the real Visual Studio, not uh, Visual Studio Code. So. Real? Oh yeah, and then they had the additions, you know, the community edition. So I had Ultimate Edition for a while, um, which was awesome because then I can do, I can install plugins, I could, you know, I could do all the things you can do in v Visual Studio Code now. Um, uh, but like simple things, like they were like, hey, if you have the community edition, you can't do reflection or install plugins. And fortunately at the time I had, uh, I had an Ultimate Edition license. Uh, but no, here it is for Mac. So that's interesting. Yeah. Oh, because they want you to do uh, cross-platform development because they bought, what's it called? Uh, I forget the name of the cross-platform development company. But yeah, it's, uh, yeah. But no, I'll, I, I might check it out someday for sure. Um, have you ever built a custom water loop uh, in a PC, no, that is one thing I have not done yet. I, I probably built probably 50 PCs in my lifetime, and I don't know, probably 10, 15 servers. I've never done a custom water loop yet, and and I want to, and I want to do it right. Um, and I've already thought it out in my head, and 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 um, you know, I, I think I want to I want to build a two PC system, um, in one case, um, and so if I if I do build if I do a custom water loop, I'm going to build a two PC system in one case. Um, so that way I can run Windows and then I could run whatever, Proxmox, Hackintosh, whatever, Linux on that second system, all within the same PC case. So that's my that's my plan. I haven't done it yet. I would love to. Um, I just haven't, uh, haven't fully thought it through yet. And I'm kind of waiting for, you know, the whole price to kind of settled Settle down all the prices and stuff like that. Thassi and Xamarin, thank you so much. Yep, Xamarin, totally. It was Xamarin, and they bought it. Oh, okay, I'm not, yeah, so doesn't like Chrome. 
Hey, Adam's okay. All right, top picks, Steam. Sure. Um, it's just, this is kind of weird. Like they're, I, I get it that, like you would expect like a back button, wouldn't you? Is that just me just being on the web too long or apps too much? I feel like that should be a back button. Uh, I have Discord in here. I do. I'm just gonna install a bunch of apps that I know. Um, Xamarin, uh, was thinking if it was possible of virtualizing two Windows VMs, each with their own keyboard GPU, pass through as a gaming machine. Yeah, I think so. I think it's totally possible. Um, I could I could probably prove that out in 30 minutes because I have two VMs in my Proxmox server. Each one has their own video card. The only thing that I haven't done is pass through those individual USB ports um, to the host, from the host to the guest. And so I would just have to look for the commands and I could totally test it. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's totally possible. Um, and if not, uh, if, if not with my current setup, I would probably just buy another USB card and just like dedicate the whole USB card uh, to one of those virtual machines. Six games, one machine. Yeah, he, yeah. Linus did it with uh, Unraid. He did it with Unraid. Yeah, he did it with Unraid. I can, I could do it. Uh, yeah, I mean, you could totally do it easily. Uh, like I said, both of my virtual machines have individual video cards passed through them, and they're both running Windows, and they're both encoding video um, almost all day long. The Mixer one isn't anymore, but my Twitch one is. And so that's exactly why I settled on Proxmox even to begin with too, was my first challenge was like, hey, can I pass through GPUs on this machine? And that was kind of the bar I set for my next hypervisor because I moved away from ESXi. And um, I thought there's a couple things I want. One, I don't want to be locked into, you know, a certain type of storage or a certain type of network card or a certain type of RAID adapter. Um, and I want to be able to pass through, um, want to be able to pass through a GPU. And so, you know, out of all the hypervisors I tested, Proxmox was able to do it. Took forever, but I figured it out. Um, might do it as sometimes like a cousin comes over and they want a game on a PC. I just don't have one laying around that's capable enough. Yeah, I, I, you totally can. Totally can. Um, you'll just need to make sure you have a decent CPU in there, right? Because they're both going to be sharing the CPU. And then hopefully that game that you're going to play um, is more GPU intensive than CPU intensive. Like there are some games that are, yes, they require a good GPU, but they also require a good CPU as well. Um, and so that's kind of a roll of, roll of the dice. But if you have a decent one, you'll be good. Uh, in the terminal, if you want to uh, go to your downloads, sudo dpkg chrome blah 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 blah, and then uh, we'll fail. And then oh, I see. Yep, because then the f will install all the dependencies. You're right. Yeah, it's a good point. Yeah, that's how I used to install Chrome back in the day. I guess. I guess. I, I guess it's always been that way. Uh, but thank you for that, Craven, because uh, I totally remember now that you say that. Like, that, like if you try to install anything that doesn't have like its dependencies, I don't think it'll do it on its own. But then if you run it again with dash F, I think that's where it goes out and grabs them. Uh, Postman, I use a ton. I'm just gonna just gonna go crazy like installing stuff. Okay, Postman, DBeaver, uh, I have used it for database management. That's pretty cool uh, because well, I use PG Admin as well. Postgres. Uh, there's VS Code right there, and. Uh, Steam, do use it, but I'm not going to install it here. Adam, not going to use it. Uh, so, this is interesting. So, is your best uh, your best bet for image editing still GIMP? Like, has it come along any way? Sorry, my dog's uh, freaking out. Um, is GIMP, GIMP still the best we have for image editing? Yeah, I think so. I guess I could have not searched for GIMP and searched for image uh, editing. What's the best for video right now? Video editing. Is it Upshot? 
I'm just throwing out names. Is an upshot uh, the name of a video editing pro program? I don't remember. Yeah, like I love Linux, but at the same time, like it's, I don't know, some of the, some of the software and I get it, it's open source and it's all community built, but it's tough to make a jump sometimes from, you know, a paid commercial product uh, to, you know, a community based one sometimes. It's, it's tough, especially when you get vendor locked in, kind of, that's how I feel like I'm, <laughs> the way I'm going with Adobe right now. It's like, hey, let's build up all this content and then, you know, you're building it on this proprietary system. And then, so you have to like keep your subscription active in order to do anything with it. <laughs> open shot, that's what it is. Thank you, Thassian. I was thinking up shot, open shot. Uh, there we go, video editor. So I've, I've used this before and it was it was pretty decent. I'll say that, it was pretty decent. Uh, and then there's um, Handbrake, which I usually use for just, um, for just like if I need to re-encode something quick and dirty and no editing whatsoever. Awesome. Hello, hey Manria, hey, how's it going? Welcome, how are you? Good to see you. Hopefully you're well. Okay, last thing I was doing, I was, last I remember, I was over here installing some of my extensions. Uh, do I get my welcome screen? I don't, so isn't there the JavaScript? Usually it'll prompt me like, Hey, do you want to install JavaScript support? Which it should handle out of the box. You would think if I uh, did file new uh, and I said uh, const test, I can type uh, test equals something. Uh, do I need a semicolon? I set this to JavaScript. It should already have JavaScript support. Yeah, it does. But sometimes it'll install some additional stuff. So usually, I use, oh, what do I use all day? Oh, I need, I would need yarn. Yeah, I would totally need a lot of stuff. I could set this up for my development environment pretty easily. Like making the jump from Mac um, to Linux would be super easy. Even making the jump from Windows for me to Linux would be, would be pretty easy, except for, you know, my gaming stuff on, in the stream. Uh, OBS is on here. Um, mainly because I use WSL. But that's a good question, OBS? Oh yeah. All the good stuff's here. C sharp, nice. Prettier, don't. I, I use prettier, but not in this way. I don't want it directly in here. Uh, debugger for Chrome, nice. Git lens, totally use Git lens. Uh, debugger, Maven. Yeah, it's all here. Oh, Docker, okay. But this is syntax though. This is, this is more than syntax. I think that's why I usually don't install it. Yeah, awesome. I should totally just like force myself to go all Linux for a week. Um, as long as I don't need to work on any of my iOS apps, I'd be fine. I'd totally be fine. And then what's the what's the what's the real way to install Docker on the latest Ubuntu? Is it just to do it through here? Yeah, no, it's to go to Docker's site. There are a few steps. Oh, I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. Uh oh, yeah. Okay. Unknown OS, Mac OS, Windows OS, View Linux Engine, eh? Okay, I'll download for Unknown OS, sure. Come on, Docker, get with the program. What? Why did it just try to send me to HTTPS 1? Huh? <laughs> did that make any sense? Like, I've done it through Terminal plenty of times. Yeah, this is all I need. I don't need your Docker desktop stuff. Uh, and we are running this. This will work because I don't need I don't need the whole desktop and the UI so I can see what containers are running, what images are running, and then they're gonna try to give me like Kitematic and stuff like that. I don't need any of that. I've been using Docker terminal like forever, so I never understood why everyone puts the dollar sign too in front of there. Is that like a safeguard? 
anyone knows that, I would love I would love to know what where this comes from. And I get it that that's you know in your terminal what it shows, but like whoever thinks that putting this is a good idea. Is this like a safeguard so I just don't copy pasta it right in there and fire it off without thinking? Uh, or, you know, because this will never work. And so, you know, I copy pasta, paste it in, fire it off, and I'm like, oh, yeah, got to remove the dollar sign. Um, what, Docker Engine? Okay. Installing. Yeah, here you go. This is what you're talking about. Yeah, you weren't joking. But these are the same things I need to do. I, I should just run, I totally should run the Rancher script to install Docker because they've got it figured out. It's like copy and paste one thing and it just works. You know, they've basically done all this for you. Same stuff I'm doing. Dollar sign, why, why? Uh, and then we need this. Nope, verify this, yep. Yeah, whatever. Verified it. All right, we'll do it. We'll play the game. Verify this. Does this look like this? Yep. 9DC8 looks pretty much like it. And CD88. Yep, CD88. It does. Oh, man. Yeah, this is... We're going here. Uh, I guess that is there instead of a pound or hash uh, to show that it's non-root, uh, but why it is copied, it just <laughs> to be a pain in the butt. I totally agree. <laughs> yeah, that's a good call. Okay, now we can update. And then we'll install this guy. Docker CE Community Edition. Go for it. Not too bad. Should have used Rancher's install script. Cool. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I, I know that I can install, you know, Docker on, on Ubuntu 20.04 is basically what this is, but I figured, hey, why not set up some stuff? I installed like a thousand things. Where do you see new apps right here? Okay, so show applications. Uh, I feel like I installed more than that. I was going click happy on everything I saw in here. It's still working. Do I get to see progress? Oh, come on. I'm not expecting this to be like an app store where I can, you know, see the progress of stuff. Okay, these are updates. Where's it? Oh, they're pending. Are they pending? Let's go back. I don't know why it asks for a password right here. Uh, click all at the bottom of that screen. Thank you. Uh, well, let's go back to installed. And you're saying this screen had a click all? Or were we at home? So there's no all here. Unless, uh, unless you were saying back in the other screen. Oh, uh, there we go. I see. Nice. Good call. Okay. Yeah, good call. Task switcher. Is uh, the terminal they give you still the best terminal? Is this the best terminal on Ubuntu? Are there better terminals? Uh, I haven't looked in a while. Like I said, I usually SSH into Linux. Uh, and does, um, is this a GNOME? thing where where all of the apps also have the this app bar up here uh because kind of wish it didn't just it's just a lot it's just big I maybe mean, that's just me um but yeah now i'm nitpicking it just seems like a lot of real estate right here i mean it's because i do a ton of ui stuff it just seems like a lot of real estate for just to tell me this and i get it i have buttons Maybe I'm, maybe I'm getting too used to to Mac. 
But I thought it, uh, maybe not. Maybe it's a gnome thing. Uh, Task Switcher. I actually like the console from KDE. Console with the K. Yeah, yeah. I haven't, uh, I mean, I'm, can I even get it here? Yeah, I can. I haven't used it in a while. Since when I, when I did Kubuntu, uh, I used it, but. Uh, Bandit 2137, I think you can edit it if you install GNOME Tweak Tool, uh, but you're getting to the weeds there. I totally agree. Like, I don't want to do, yeah. I don't want, uh, like, if the OS was like, hey, you know, whatever, give me a seamless window, I'd say, okay. But I, yeah, I definitely don't want to go in and start tweaking the OS because who knows what's going to happen after that. I'm there with you. I'll definitely be in the weeds then. What's my launcher? This in space? Nope. This in space? Nope. So it's just it. My super key and then console. Probably still installing. It is. I do like how this is live right there. Yeah, console's installing. Well, let's see what else we have. VS Code. I don't even think VS Code needs to be open anymore. How do you minimize stuff? Do you just minimize like that? And then where does it go? I feel like. I feel like such a Linux noob right now because I'm not used to this UI yet. Like I like I minimized it and it's just just kind of hanging out. You just see it in alt tab, but you don't it's not really there. Like I'm all about using the keyboard to, to bring an app back up, but I don't I don't see it anymore. Just kind of kind of odd to me. I guess so. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm making a big deal out of nothing. All right, let's see console. Not that I'm the, not that I'm even a terminal snob. Basically, anything I can type uh, commands in, I'm, I'm cool with. I am, I am particular though about my colors. Yeah, this feels a little sharper, and maybe it's just the colors. Like this feels very washed out to me. It probably is the colors. Yeah, this, this feels, this feels more like uh, I turn two. On Mac, which I yeah use all day long, but the, I can probably there are probably themes for this guy, right? Advanced, no. Reference. Uh, global shortcuts, profiles, pop, colors, built-in skins. Oh yeah, green on black. All right, it's getting a little sharper there. Gray on black, yeah. Tango light burning my eyeballs. That is too. Solarized dark. Okay. Oh, that is so bright. I'll, I'll go with that for now. Just because like I, I like the super high contrast. Because it's easier for me to see. Even more than that. But this is uh I feel like the text here has a nicer it's like a true type. And this uh, I just totally turned off where it's like it's it's a little too sharp, but anyways, that's pretty awesome. Uh, max min. Uh, oh, I see. Max min. Yeah. yeah, I think you were talking about maximizing this. Oh, I would SSH into stuff from here, but I, I just don't even want to do that on this test machine because I know I can. Once I SSH into any of my servers, they're going to be just like any of my other servers. So this is awesome so far. Like, like, why would one choose? I guess, why would one choose, you know, Pop! OS over like just a regular Ubuntu or Ubuntu Mate or any other flavor that's out there or Mint, you know, Linux Mint is another one uh, where they're all trying to be, you know, a better flavor of Ubuntu. Hey, thank you for the follow. S3 Sir Sirlock, Sirlock, I'm, I'm going to pronounce the E. Our S3 RLOC4. Thank you for the follow. Appreciate it. You know, like why would why would one choose? I guess. Uh, you know, a different a different like this distribution. I guess specifically over Ubuntu. And I think it's because it has like a lot of the third party stuff like already configured for you. Um, so free and not free. Just making that up. Just guessing. But that's what Mint was kind of doing too. Um, where they were just installing everything uh, to give you a better user experience out of the gate, which which I think is is a good idea for most people. Yeah. 
Oh yeah, Docker Bone now. Well, Git's here, I know that. Uh, yeah, for sure, because that comes on most Linux systems. Oh yeah. Yeah, all good. Docker's all good and running. Awesome. So do you have themes? Is, are themes a thing in Pop OS? Like, can I can I spruce this up a little bit? Oh, weather? Okay, I'm gonna open that. I'll do that while while I'm digging for themes. Broken clouds, all right. So let's look. Let's look for themes. Um, it'd be customization. All right, I'm just gonna type in theme appearance. Here we go. We have some contextual search. Okay, let me min minimize some of this. So far, I'm, I'm liking it. I'm I am liking it. All right, I'm gonna minimize a lot of this stuff. Okay, I'm liking. Yeah, it's good. This uh, wait. Okay, appearance. That's where I just was. Oh yeah, dark theme. Yeah, why why didn't I do that like 30 minutes ago? Applications. Blender. Why why does Blender get oh so no, what all of my applications have? Oh, gotcha. That's interesting that they have their own settings too. I see why. Like, do you wanna do you want it to allow notifications? Do you want it to appear in search? Which is cool. That's the way a lot of OSs are going now. Network stuff, that's interesting, but I can't really do too much with it. Huh, okay. Search, applications, we're just there. Privacy, online accounts, sharing, sound, power. Okay, the rest is just normal stuff, kind of kind of boring stuff. Important though. OS upgrade, default applications, users, universal access. Oh, so accessibility, I assume. Oh yeah, so just, uh, that's a nicer way to say accessibility. Universal access, I like it. I like it. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, we don't need any other places. Awesome, well, um, man, uh, I think I'm gonna call it, this is usually around my, the time I, I kinda come to a stop, uh, only because I have to finish up a couple things, so been on for a couple hours now but uh man thank you guys so much for for hanging out uh sorry if the uh beginning of that was uh, a little bit painful and sorry if like the whole thing was kind of painful i was just kind of exploring pop os like i said never run it before thought i'd check it out feels feels a lot like ubuntu because it's built on ubuntu um feels pretty smooth um i enjoy it um yeah i I'd, I'd have to compare it to like um you know, uh, if I were to compare it to anything, um, I'd have to explore other options too. Because like I, I've run Mint way back in the day, I've run Monte way back in the day, and even Ubuntu Desktop I ran way back in the day. You know, I typically, like I said, I just shell into servers. So nice to see um, that Linux Desktop is still progressing, for sure. Um, but yeah, I wanted to thank you. There was. Um, a lot of follows in there and a lot of bits so thank you so much uh, but most of all yeah thank you for your time and for hanging out um <laughs> shame you didn't get to see uh, netscape navigator yeah maybe next time to count on maybe next time or surf or all the other things uh, <laughs> that uh, uh that you guys were throwing out there so yeah keep them coming uh keep me on my toes too you don't even have to throw the cap in there either uh I'm, yeah i should uh just keep me on my toes uh ggs for sure um came in a little late tonight had to work too long have a good night scala you too thanks for thanks for coming in uh the painful part was making a good stream highlight on youtube yeah i know so many to choose from right uh but i have uh i have one already picked out uh for my video that drops saturday morning so i i hope it's i hope it's okay but uh anyways um thank you so much for hanging out like like i said um time is uh is I, I say this a lot. I haven't said a lot on stream, but just in general, time is the most precious thing we have. So thank you for spending your time with me tonight. 
I really appreciate it. And um, I will see you guys Saturday, 3 Central. So that's 3 CST. Um, new video Saturday morning. So I appreciate it. Um, and we'll go from there. Thank you so much. Have a good night. Really appreciate it. We'll see you. Peace.